people have been coming up to me all week and saying, Joe Bob, how did you get Elvira to come on your show? Like, this is not a legitimate show. Frankly, I'm a little ticked off about it. Because I know, I know, I know, she's the all-time queen of movie hostesses. But did it ever occur to you people that maybe she would want to come on the show? That maybe as a matter of professional courtesy, like maybe we were hanging around one night at the professional late-night movie host Burger and Grill or something, and she said, Joe Bob, I really have the utmost respect for your work as a professional movie host. That could have happened. Didn't, but it might have happened. And see, what you don't realize is that Elvira and I, we're like that. We go way back. I'll tell you another thing that burns my bacon. Wanda Bodine came up to me this week and she said, Joe Bob, I can't wait for this. Elvira is going to eat you alive. You finally got a woman on the show that's more sarcastic than you are. And then she just died laughing. You're horse meat, she kept saying, like I can't hold my own in a television situation. I mean, we're all adults here. Elvira has her way of introducing the movies. I have my way of introducing the movies. I don't think we have to get nasty about it. Because anyway, I love this woman. We're like brother and sister. Or maybe like stepbrother and stepsister. Or maybe a retarded brother and a sister that's been adopted in a dysfunctional family. But it's that kind of relationship. See, it's a family relationship. Okay, Elvira's going to introduce the movie now. What can I say? The woman who, for the past 10 years, has been the star of late-night horror hosting. She has her own line of videos, her own line of perfume, her own line of Halloween costumes. She made a four-star drive-in classic movie called Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. She has another flick coming out next year. She has a pinball game based on her, an Atari computer game. She records albums. She sells pillowcases. And next week, over 80,000 people are expected to descend on Knott's Berry Farm to see her annual show, The Truth or Scare Review. She's somewhere around here right now, my close personal friend, a great lady, Elvira. Hello, darling. I thought we'd spend some time together now that that annoying Joe Bob is gone and it's just you and me. Annoying? <laughs> oh, I mean, I thought I would absolutely barf. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about devil worship. Oh, a subject that is near and dear to my chest. Uh, I mean, my heart. <laughs> Tonight's movie is Blood on Satan's Claw, and it's about an evil, beautiful woman who likes to get intimate with people and then throw them into a flaming pit and watch them burn up like, like, you know, like a, like a Pop-Tart when you leave it in the toaster too long. Oh, well, enough about that. Do you guys remember that movie, The Head with Two Things? Or wait, was it The, the Thing with Two Heads? Oh, no, I remember now. It was the two giant things with two heads. Gosh, that is the movie I still dream about every night. <laughs> now, that is a mutant for you. But I was having this nightmare about giant things, and it made me think of you out there. You know who I mean. Because I need to find the perfect date for Halloween. <laughs> I need a creature of the darkness who wants to descend into the valley of me. I mean, with me. Uh, it has to be someone who really loves the darkness and has an American Express Platinum card. <laughs> so, if you'd like to carve my pumpkin, then I'd like to run my fingernails over your broomstick. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Joe Bob, please. <laughs> God, you're ruining everything. Sorry, I, I got carried away. I'm suffering over here. <laughs> you are so immature. Oh, maybe you've never been around a real woman before, Joe Bob. There is more to this babe than eyeliner and fingernail polish. There is also a ton of hairspray. I'm sorry. <sighs> yeah, look, just let Mama show you how to do it, okay? It won't happen again, really. Sorry. <sighs> Great, now I forgot what I was saying. Oh, I hate when I forget. What was that movie I was talking about again? Joe Bob, what was that movie again? Is, it, is there a problem? No, except you ruined my whole routine. I need to know the title of the stupid movie. Uh, I'll be back in a minute, darling. Keep those engines purring. What was that part about the pumpkin and your broomstick? And... Oh, I'm gagging. Or was it my broomstick and your pumpkin? <laughs> Joe Bob, this is a very low-class show. Maybe that's why I feel so at home here. Of course, that doesn't make sense. It must have been two pumpkins, because... Joe Bob, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Joe Bob! Uh, look, are we still I'm doing my interview sense. after this thing? Fine, I'm fine. I'm fine. Maybe we should just run the movie. I mean, who's producing this show? 
Really, I, I need a drink of pumpkins or something. I mean, I need a drink. Is this like a union show or what? The Blood on Satan's Claw, one of the few movies where the teenagers are defeated. The townspeople destroyed that little devil-worshipping slut, didn't they? One of the great British horror films back in the 70s. And enjoying it here with me is our special guest of honor, the final guest in the Horror Host Hall of Fame month, the gorgeous Elvira. <laughs> I finally recovered from your entrance. That, that just blew me away. You oh. are priceless. Priceless? Well, I do have my prize, Joe Bob, oh, but <laughs> we'll talk about that later. <laughs> okay. Now, someone told me just today that uh, this Thursday night, Halloween, you are going to perform for 80,000 people at Knott's Berry Farm. Is that right? Yes. Well, not all at the same time, however. They're going to kind of spread them out over a couple nights. Oh, I thought it was like a Shea Stadium type deal, but it's... No, yeah, it's just me and the Beatles. Oh, the Beatles aren't together anymore. Oh, sorry. Well, so, that, but that's like, this has become your trademark show now, hasn't it? I mean, it's, a, it's an institution in Southern California. Yeah, oh, an institution in Southern California. Yeah, that's where all my fan mail comes from. Uh, no, it is kind of an institution, yeah, and I should be in it, and I am in it. And it's this really great show that I do. It's kind of like, I'm kind of like uh, the, you know, Sammy Davis of the macabre. And I do this sort of singing, dancing, joke-telling kind of show, and it's real fabulous. Yeah, well... <laughs> I do say it so myself. Yeah, well, tell me about this, because Elvira has... You've come a long way since 1981, when you, you, you were on a local movie show at uh, KHJ-TV in L.A., oh, is that right? Yes. Yes. Tell the story for us. How you first developed on, on KHJ. Oh, I well, didn't develop on KHJ. I was born this way. <laughs> My mom thought I was twins. All right. It's like, it's like you have a dirtier mind than I do. It's amazing. Thank you. Go, go ahead. Uh, oh. What's, I mean, no, don't go ahead. But oh. tell me the story of KHJ TV when you first, we need to stay on the well, subject. Well, okay. Here you know, Joe Bob. <laughs> well, I had to bend over backwards to get that job. I'll tell you. <laughs> even bend over forwards but I finally did get the job the producer was a very good friend of mine and uh, you know before that I was like just working in a little factory um, I got fired I was manufacturing depends undergarments and I got fired from that job and so I thought well what's the next best thing hosting horror movies so I got the job and I worked there for about a thousand years it seemed like anyway only although it was only a few I think and um, no, it was pretty fabulous. We had some really, really great, great classic films there, you know. Yeah, and, like uh, what? Oh, like I Eat Your Skin. Really? We've been trying yeah. to get that film oh. for years on this show. <laughs> That's a fabulous film. You can pick it up now at the video store. Rhino, Rhino Video, me hosting. It's down there now. Well, you know, it was always on a Sorry, double Joe bill Bob. with I Drink Your Blood. I drink your blood and I eat my skin. Oh, I know. We were thinking yeah. of it, you know, I eat your skin, too, uh, making a remake. But that's another story for another time, too. <laughs> okay. Uh, but what about, let me ask you, what about your costume? Because, you know. What about it? Well, I mean, I, I'm sitting here, I'm looking at this costume, and I'm saying, shame on you, Elvira, and thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I know. My mom says the same thing, you know. She was so mad when I took this dress because, you know, she didn't have anything to wear that night. <laughs> But uh, anyway, my dress, you know, well, my costume has been a very popular bestseller. I'll tell you, they sell this costume to kids, women, men, dogs. You wouldn't believe it, Joe Bob. Everybody buys this costume every year. So it's been kind of a number one bestseller, you know, if I do say so myself. You even corrupt little girls with this costume, don't you? I mean, little girls dress up like Elvira at Halloween, don't they? Well, yes, they do, but, you know, they're missing a couple of things. They have to wait a few years. They, they have to so dress up and then sit around for about ten years and wait. So their material, the, 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 the costume for a six-year-old girl has actually more material than your costume has in it. Well, something like that. Or usually I just tell them, you know, put it on and go as Cher. Yeah, okay. Like that. Okay. But it works still. It's very good to buy it anyway. Okay. So. Well, speaking of skimpy costumes. Yes. You have a great Las Vegas production number in your movie. I, I call it a Las Vegas production number. It is a Las Vegas it production is. number. It that, is. That's a good thing to call your it movie, then. Elvira, yeah. Mistress of the Dark. And some of your fans, which is a very popular movie, but some of your fans, you know, tell, tell us how that came to be. How that came to be? You mean, you mean... That part? Well, see, there was another question that I was going to ask you, but it's, I can't ask you the question, so let's no. move on. <laughs> well, you know, some kids practice the piano when they're little, but, you know, I practice tassel twirling. Okay, well, see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, growing up in wherever you grew up, right, you learned to tassel twirl. Okay. Yes. All right, and then when you, um, 
when your show Movie Macabre got started, did you? Do you I know that. I know that you just come out, El Elvira, and you're out. great. You're you're terrific, and you just say whatever comes into your mind. Did it ever? Did you ever like write anything down before you came out to do the show? Well, I haven't learned to write yet. No, I did write some things you down. Do write. Don't tell you're, anyone though. You do. You write all your stuff, don't you? Well, I am dumber than I. I'm not as dumb as I look. I mean, Joe Bob. Uh, <laughs> yes. Sometimes I can even write, and I even think of jokes and I write them down. Yeah. It's true. I kind of cheat that way, you know. And you do it yourself. Unlike you, of course. <laughs> right, right. Oh yeah, everything here is completely natural. <laughs> oh, now, me too. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, we yeah, stay on the subject. Okay. <laughs> okay now, what is this now, be honest now? with me. Be honest with me. Why? Did you watch? Do you watch the movies that you introduce? Yes, I have to watch them about a billion times before I have to show them. That's why I get paid the big bucks. Really? Not yeah, like you. Unlike you, huh? you right? Well, we're, we're, uh, do you are you a fan of horror movies? Um, you know, you oh, just hell me, yes, Joe no, Bob! No, 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 no. How could you ever ask such a thing? I didn't finish the question. Oh. Horror movie hosts. Oh no, like, no, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like the, there were some people that came even before Elvira. There were some great horror movie hosts like like Zachary and <gasps> Goulardi. Yes. And were you ever a fan of those people when you were growing oh, up? I was a very big fan of theirs, although I lived in a kind of poverty situation where we were too poor to have a movie host. <laughs> but later, yeah. I learned about them, and then I became a very big fan of theirs. Yeah, okay. And then, then and tell me this, when did you know that Elvira had, uh, you know, Herbies? become... Oh. <laughs> Had what? No, that's, well, tell that story first. Oh, okay. No, no, go on to your okay. question. When did you know that Elvira was bigger than just a local show and people started really noticing you everywhere? Mm -hmm. Well, you see, I just came on television like in September of 81, back in 81, 1981, that is. And um, just to come on the show and like about two weeks passed, I did my show and like I started getting all these letters and cards and invitations to everybody's Halloween party and everybody's like little Halloween get together in everybody's house and you know, oh I mean everybody wanted me, probably like to babysit or something. But I started thinking, whoa dude, I'm really popular now. And I just got like, these giant, giant sacks of mail and next thing I knew I was a famous, fabulous, glamorous movie star. So it happened in uh, like a year. No, like two weeks. Oh, two weeks. Like two okay. weeks. All right. Well, all right. <laughs> well, people may not know that all the industries that you're involved in now. That's like, true. Um, like there's a line of Elvira makeup. Yes, there is, although I don't wear any. I'm a natural beauty. <laughs> well, who wears Elvira makeup? Oh, all the ugly gals. Uh, okay. No, no. Everybody loves the makeup for Halloween. You know, they like to go dressed as me. So, yeah. uh, oh, you know, kids wear it, guys, men, girls, everybody wears it, just like the costume. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then you have a great line of uh, Elvira video cassette movies on uh, Rhino video, right? Yes, that's true. And you true. have Elvira pillowcases. That's an interesting yes. one. Yes, ooh, you get drool all over it and everything. <laughs> Elvira pinball game. Very popular. Like a ballet game, right? Yeah, like and, a regular old pinball machine. Yeah, and two computer games. Elvira perfume. You have a model kit. A mo you can buy a, a plastic model of Elvira, right? That's true. Oh, God knows what they do with that. You have a fan, <laughs> you have a fan club. Uh, you've been on television shows all over the world. You do live shows. You do music videos. You do benefits. <laughs> I'm bigger right? than Madonna. <laughs> you are bigger than Madonna. You, you like? I am. That's and, true. <laughs> and you, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about this, but you raise money for uh, worthy causes like AIDS research and animal rights and everything. <laughs> so this obviously takes up all your time now, right? Does this? Does this? Does being Elvira ever, ever get too much for you? Oh heck no! In my spare time, I'm a happy homemaker in Van Nuys. <laughs> No, yes, it does get to be too much. Uh, no, it's pretty fun, you know. I really like doing it all the time. I mean, it's just me being me and helping people whenever I can. For a certain fee, that is. Okay, now, one more question. You, be honest with me. You, you must get a lot of proposals from the guys. Well, I do. None, of, none for marriage yet, but... I do get a lot of proposals. Why? Did you have anything in mind? Oh, I'm sure I could think of something. But, uh, well, I mean, what, I mean, do a lot of people come up to you on the street? Uh, well, they, they, they try to, yes, uh, but I, I have two big you dogs. Have. Oh, two big dogs, okay. Away, kinda. <laughs> I would guess that you get some mail from, you get mail from heavy metal headbanger 
Perhaps, because oh, I do. Oh, yes, much, much mail from the Metallica crowd. Lots of mail from institutions, as I mentioned before, you know, the mentally uh, uh, impaired institutions and the prisons. The prisons especially love me. I don't know if they like you as much as they love me, but... Well, yeah, they like me oh, too much, actually. Mm -hmm, they love me, and they all want to show up at my doorstep when they get out. Uh, and, you know, the military and uh, uh, people in uniform like me very much. I don't know what it is about that. Well, yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you mentioned that because we always have a big prison population watching from... Uh, all right. You can't believe all the guys I've seen who, who like, like say, Elvira, you got me through prison. You know? Really? You okay. Know, go, well, I'm sure they're watching out in uh, Camp Hill State Prison in Pennsylvania. I'm not kidding. In, uh, well, uh, Indian, hi, guys. Indian Come Springs, on over to my Nevada house. Prison. They're, they're watching you, Elvira. Okay. Yes, at Joe Bob's <laughs> after the show. All right. Well, this has been a great honor to have you here, Elvira. Thank so uh, break a leg at Knott's Berry Farm on oh, Thursday night. Oh, I probably night. will. And uh, now, unfortunately, we have to watch a movie. What is that movie that we're going to... Posed for Murder, they tell me. The story of a nude model. Oh! Well, it's not really as sleazy as it sounds, though, unfortunately. Oh. It's a murder mystery. And, you know, well, as we say here on Drive-In Theater, we're going into the old toilet now. And so what would you say on Movie <laughs> Macabre when you had a movie like this? <laughs> well... I'd just flush. You would? Yeah. <sighs> I gotta go rest now. <laughs> <laughs>